as we put out this cloth, we say thank you, God, for being here. And as we put out this Bible, we say thank you, Father, for your word. And as we put out this cross, we say thank you, Jesus, for your love. And as we put out this candle, we say, thank you, Spirit, for showing us the way. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. Hello. Happy Easter. I'm up Crow Hill again and traditionally on Easter morning some of us come up Crow Hill and we have a service and we call that out to Campbell. Hallelujah! Jesus is risen and Ian who's normally with us adds on at the end and I do too now. We say and he will come again. And so I'm up here now and I'm going to fly a kite because Jesus is risen and I want to raise him up high. And this is what my kite says. So let's raise him on high. You could fly a kite either today or tomorrow. And remember, Jesus is risen. And he will come again. In the meantime, you could come to Young Church with me and hear the happy ending to the story. See how Jesus rose from the dead. So I'm finishing the story in Benjamin's box this week, which is a fictional tale about Benjamin, but it's set in biblical times when Jesus was alive and crucified and what comes next. But you can read the story in Matthew 27, 57 to 61, and Matthew 28, it continues, verses 1 to 8. So look it up in your Bible. Last week we got to the very sad bit where Jesus was crucified and the soldiers gambled for his clothes and Benjamin was left in unbearable sadness. Benjamin, called Eli the next morning, Come hear the news. Benjamin stuck his head out the window and rubbed his sleepy eyes. They've posted guards at Jesus' tomb, explained Eli. Some say that Jesus will return to life. Benjamin perked up. Oh, my grandfather told me that Jesus brought some people back from the dead. Maybe it will happen again, said Eli. But the soldiers say they're making sure people don't steal the body. Quick, Benjamin, he dressed and raced to the tomb. Could it be, could Jesus have returned to life? Oh, how he hoped so. But the huge stone remained in place and the guards blocked the tomb. With dark, scowling faces, they told him to leave at once. As Benjamin walked slowly down the hill, he noticed a piece of white cloth. Hanging from a small branch, he plucked it off and rubbed it between his fingers. His parents wove cloth like that for burials. Jesus is dead, he told himself as he continued towards home. That night he sadly placed the cloth in his box. This would surely be the last thing to remember his friend by. He tried to pray, but no words came. He wondered if 
God ever listened. Early the next morning, Benjamin went to the market for his mother. He used to enjoy the crowds in the city, but now they only reminded him of how everyone had turned against Jesus. He shuffled along without looking up. It's a miracle, shrieked a girl. Benjamin stopped in his tracks and listened. Jesus has risen from the dead. The stone's been moved. Benjamin turned and ran from the market and up towards the tomb. Could it possibly be true? Could Jesus have risen from the grave? In his heart, he believed it could be. It must be. He ran even faster. Sure enough, the stone was rolled away. He fell to his knees and thanked God. When he stood, he picked up a sharp piece of broken rock. It must have crumbled from the huge stone. With a joyful heart, he marched back down to town. Jesus was alive. In the market, he met a woman who was a friend to Jesus. I know the good news, he said. Jesus is alive. Yes, she smiled. It's as the prophet said, on the third day, hell rise. Some of us have even seen him. Benjamin ran home and told his parents. He placed a stone in the box. What a treasure he had now. He is risen. During the next few days, Benjamin and Eli listened as the disciples shared about how Jesus had appeared to them in various places. Jesus says that this all came to pass just so forgiveness could be preached to all nations, beginning right here in Jerusalem, explained a disciple. He said that since we saw all things, now we can go out and tell others the good news of his forgiveness. Benjamin smiled. Now he understood that Jesus had forgiven him too, and he wanted to share the good news. He ran home and got his treasure box and went out into the streets and gathered all of his friends. Inside this box, he explained, is a great treasure. The children grew closer and listened with excitement. One by one, Benjamin took out each item. He explained how he got it and what it all meant. And you so you see, he said as he closed the box and looked into their faces, the treasure is really Jesus. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can all be forgiven by God the Father. They all cheered and begged him to tell the story again. That night, Benjamin opened his box one more time before he went to bed. He examined each item, handling them all with love and care. And finally, he placed the last one back in the box. Then he knelt and prayed. Dear God, thank you for letting me find all these special treasures. But most of all, I thank you for sending me the greatest treasure of all. Thank you for sending Jesus. And help me to be a good servant for Jesus. Help me to tell everyone I know about the good news. Amen. And just at the back of this book is a little verse that you'll remember from a few weeks ago. When we were talking about how precious children are. And how important you are in our church family. It says, Jesus says... I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. And you can find that in Matthew 18 verses 2 to 5. So from the sad story last week, we have a happy ending. Jesus is risen. He came back to life. And he died that we might be forgiven. And he conquered death. 
And it's like we have conquered the death that sin brings. We have new life. So this isn't a happy ending. This is a happy beginning. It's a happy beginning for us to have a new life with Jesus. And new life is symbolised by an egg. Because out of eggs come new life. Chicks and all sorts of baby animals. Baby humans even. Little eggs inside us. And that's why we have eggs at Easter. We have new life in us. Brought about by the Holy Spirit. But I'll tell you the story of the Holy Spirit. And how he came later on in a few weeks. But I think about us having new life. And it's like a kite. Having the wind in it. And lifting it up. And that's what I feel like. Being a born again Christian. With the Holy Spirit in me. So to remember that Jesus is risen like a kite. I'm going to make a kite to remember. To make my kite, I have found these materials. Um, I'm going to use tissue paper, um, although then I can only really fly it in dry weather. You might want to use a plastic bag or something. I'm not sure whether I'm going to use pipe cleaners or straws for my... Um, cross beam i'm going to give it a try and play about and see what how what works um i want some strong thread that's light all of these materials i'm thinking about to help this kite fly um it needs to be light so i'm trying to use really light things and i think the pipe cleaner is actually lighter than the straws this um fishing line is strong but very light so you could use string or maybe a really strong sewing thread. Um, something that's light. Um, I'm just going to give it a go, really. And first of all, I'm going to do my crossbeam. So I've cut one pipe cleaner shorter than the other. And I'm just going to twiddle them together. To make the supporting structure for the kite. Now I'm going to cut. I think I'm going to cut an egg shape. Because it's Easter. And decorate it. Like this. So um, I stuck my cross beam onto the tissue paper. Before I drew round. And then cut it out. Um, but I made a mistake. Uh, what I should have done. Was left the ends of the pipe cleaners. Uh, outside the tape so I could tie the string onto it the uh, or the thread onto it see I've put the stellar tape right up to the end there which is a mistake really uh, and I can't unstick it so I'm going to tie mine here uh, but I can at least tie this one in the right place and then before I cut it out I decorate the other side so I put Jesus is risen and will come again I'm going to colour that in as well all coloured in well now uh, I cut out some bits for the tail but they keep curling over so I'm just going to put a little fold in them like that and that should keep them straight um, and make it easier for me to tie them onto the tail like this I've put I've put a white piece of card down just to show you um, what I'm doing because it's very difficult to see this thread because it's so thin. I've attached one end to the the bit I left sticking out on my kite, tied it on with a normal knot. Um, I, it needs to be a lot longer than you think this thread. You can always cut off extra but make it really long. And then I'm going to use the knot I showed you last week to attach my paper. So you make two hoops go round once go round twice so that's a fish and a dish put the fish on the dish oh so you've got your two hoops together then put the towel paper through the two hoops put 
position it in the middle and then pull the end of your thread and then there's your tail piece there's another one i'm going to continue with those i'm putting my last piece on now and i'm going to use another knot i'm going to show you just a normal slip knot so you wrap the thread around so you've got a one hoop can you see my hoop? There it is. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, I've lost it. Let's do it again. Got a hoop. See my hoop there? And then put the thread through to make another hoop. And pull that hoop so the other hoop closes up. So normal. And you could make that one hoop bigger. I'm going to put my last piece through now. And then once it's in the middle, just put it tight. Just pull it tight to make that last one. Okay, and then I've got my tail. Now I need to put my threads on. But to put the threads on, I'm going to need to, I want them to cross over. Um, it, and, and be tie, go through a little circle and then I will tie my main thread onto the circle. It will become apparent in a moment. And I haven't got a little circle, so I'm going to make one out of a straw. So I'm going to cut the end off of the straw. So I'm going to tie a thread to here to here, but had this in the middle. And a tie th thread from here to here with this in the middle. So it will be in the middle like this. So um, I've tied two threads, one from this side to this side, and it goes through this little circle of straw, and another one from here, as far as I could get up, to here. This point was easier to tie to because I left a bit sticking out, which I recommend you do on all four corners. And that one goes through here as well. So both threads go through here. Now I'm going to tie the thread that we're going to fly it from onto this circle as well. But I'm not gonna cut off a long length because it will get tangled. I'm gonna keep it attached to this rule and I will take this up with me because I don't know how long I need it. I might need it very, very long. So I'm just gonna take the whole rule with me. You might want to do that with your thread, whatever it's attached to. Right, so I'm gonna tie that on now. So that's all tied on now, as if by magic, and I'm all ready to go and fly my kite. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the light of his face shine on you. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the light of his face shine on you. The Lord be gracious to you, the Lord be gracious to you. May he turn his face to you and bring you peace. May he turn his face to you and bring you peace. Bye-bye.